Uh, we're now going to have our report from uh, Dawn, our Administrative Charging Committee report. The Administrative Charging Committee met on January 5th, February 2nd, March 1st, and March 8th. So we've had four meetings so far in 2024. We reviewed and deliberated 75 cases. We have rendered 74 opinions, and one opinion has been deferred pending information requested from Internal Affairs. Um, of those 74 cases, we've resolved all our Baltimore County Police Department employees, officers. But I give the report, I will say officer, that does not mean it's just an officer. It can be any rank, but just for the ease of reporting, I'll say officer. Um, of the 74 cases, there were 18 use of force cases. So the breakdown of the 74 is there were 22 departmental accidents, 20 officers were administratively charged, and two officers were not administratively charged. We had two complaints of discrimination. Those two officers were not administratively charged. We had one complaint for rude and discourteous behavior and failure to offer medical assistance, no administrative charges. Three complaints of rude and discourteous behavior. One officer was administratively charged and two were not. One complaint for failure to write a report and improperly threatening arrest, no administrative charges. One complaint for failure to take necessary police action, no administrative charges. One complaint for failure to conduct an investigation in a timely fashion, failure to preserve evidence and failure to conduct an interview, not administratively charged. Three complaints for unnecessary use of force, three officers were not charged. 10 complaints for excessive force, 10 officers were not charged. One complaint for sexual assault and excessive force, not administratively charged. Eight complaints for unprofessional execution of a search warrant, eight officers not administratively charged. Two complaints for serving an inactive warrant, both officers were not charged. One complaint for an unlawful search, no administrative charges. One complaint for an illegal search, not administratively charged. One complaint for failure to resolve a parking complaint, no administrative charges. One complaint for failure to resolve a call for service, no administrative charges. One complaint for unprofessional conduct, no administrative charges. Two complaints of racial profiling. Two officers were not administratively charged. One complaint for theft of a gun and failure to report gun theft, not administratively charged. Three complaints for unprofessional conduct, failure to de-escalate an improper threat of arrest. Three officers were not administratively charged. One complaint for excessive force, racial profiling, violating constitutional rights and discourteous conduct, not administratively charged. On this the end, I promise. Um, three complaints for excessive force and improper handling of personal property, three officers not administratively charged. One complaint for sexual assault and body-worn camera violation. The officer was not charged for sexual assault and was charged for violating body-worn camera policy. One complaint for an improper tow and unprofessional handling of a call for an accident, not administratively charged. One complaint for improper traffic stop and failure to identify their supervisor, not administratively charged. And one complaint for unfair treatment and failure to provide accurate information about the law, not administratively charged. So far as of today, our next meeting is April 5th at noon here in this room and via WebEx. Um, so far, we have 20 cases for that next meeting, but they can come in at any time. So that number is not a definite for what we have, but that's pending today. Um, the last thing I have was there was a member of the public that spoke at the December meeting, and I didn't understand at the time what that person was saying, but they expressed concern that three hours is not enough time for the ACC to review cases sufficiently. And I didn't understand where that comment came from, and I noticed on our website it showed we only meet for three hours. So I agree three hours is not enough for our caseload, and we don't restrict it to three hours. That's just a placeholder for the county website. We are here until the building closes, and when we haven't been able to finish our cases in that day, we schedule another meeting while making sure we're within our timeline that we have to have things done. 
So I want to thank that person for bringing that to our attention because we don't just meet for three hours or we're here until it's done. Does anybody have any questions or comments or? I just want to thank the members of the ACC and, and to piggyback off what Don said, uh, the March 1st meeting went till five o'clock, did not complete the docket there. So rescheduled and these members were willing to quickly get rolling at uh, on the next date on March 8th and complete the docket, spend another hour and a half, two hours to wrap up those cases. So there is certainly no limit on the amount of time outside of both logistics in this building and the availability of members. We don't, we, I'm very proud of the work we're doing. We all come very well prepared. We know the cases, we know what we've reviewed and we all come with our own thoughts and opinions and come together to form a group opinion. Um, and we take as long as we need for each case. So. So uh, with that, so we're going to move forward to our public comment section. Let's, do we have any? Online? We do. Just wait one second on my end, and we're gonna. I'm gonna get my timer up so that I do see that Miss Healy's hand is up. So, oh, let me reset here. Sorry. If you want to unmute her. You don't need to make them. There. Yep. Just All right. <laughs> All right, Ms. Healy, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to um, retouch on some things that I brought up on the last PAB meeting. Um, I was very excited to see that so many questions were asked um, during this ACC meeting. And I think it was just so wonderful that you guys gained clarification on the disciplinary process, like even asking what a written reprimand was. I think that was amazing because, you know, it's a piece of paper. <laughs> you know, you get one, you get two, you get three, then actions happen. Like a written reprimand is the lowest form of discipline, you know, and I think it was very important that people were engaging. Um, one of the things, thank you, Don, for clarifying the time limit question. Because um, as you can see online, it does say that it's only for three hours. Um, also, there's been a consistent issue online that I already addressed with um, Mr. Henry about the passcode. So today, again, there was no passcode for the meeting. So I had to pull over on the side of the road and whip out my laptop to come on video. So there's probably a lot of people who couldn't participate today because in order to use the phone access to WebEx, there has to be a passcode entered after the access code. So that's one thing to remember. I also did send Mr. Henry one of the internal affairs report for a case that I had before the ACC developed. The reason why I sent the case over was to reiterate what I said to Don about the fact that sometimes the officers are not interviewed. The complainant may be interviewed just one time before the investigation starts, and then you never hear anything again from the detective. But I had a case where officers um, arrested me on a warrant for a noise complaint, which was completely trumped up and ended up being dismissed. But during that warrant service, my breast and my vagina was exposed. They didn't let me get dressed, and they held me down on the ground handcuffed while I was fully nude. And none of the officers were interviewed, and they all were exonerated. But yet, as you see, Chief McCullough, who I knew at the time as Captain McCullough in my tenure at the police department, speaks about dignity and respect. I think the basic point of dignity and respect is making sure a woman's breasts are not fully exposed or her vagina is not exposed when you're serving a warrant in her home. So that was what I wanted to bring up to ACC in regards to questioning whether or not the officers were interviewed and why weren't they interviewed. We can't simply rely fully on body-worn camera to see why an officer wouldn't cover up someone's breasts. You're not going to get that information just looking at a body-worn camera video. Um, unfortunately and fortunately, that officer, Robert Mazuka, has left the department and he moved on to Harford County, but I'm truly in fear for any woman that he comes in contact with. Um, officer Vini, Frank Vini is still at the department at Essex Precinct, and so is Brandon Huseman. And it's just very concerning that I have to pursue legal action against the department to get some sort of final end to the situation that they subjected me to. So I did send that to Henry. Unfortunately, he didn't disseminate it to the 
to the people in the, um, the room today, but I just wanted to touch base on if anybody has questions for the officers, I think it would be very important to initiate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. For, thank you. Thank you for your comments.